The most mysterious genetic legacies in the world doesn't come from an empire, but from a small island on Europe's edge. Irish DNA is unlike any other. It holds ancient secrets buried beneath myths, invasions and migration, and yet its core remains surprisingly untouched. Why is it that despite waves of colonizers, the Irish genome still holds echoes of people who lived over 10,000 years ago? And what makes their DNA so different, even among their Celtic neighbors? In this video, we're digging deep into the roots of Ireland's genetic mystery, from the first hunter-gatherers to the legends of the Celts and Vikings to the hidden patterns found in modern Irish descendants around the world. Before we start, I'm on a road to get 10,000 subscribers as a small channel. If you want to help me, please subscribe. Long before the Celts, before castles, and even before farming, Ireland was home to some of Europe's oldest humans. Around 10,000 years ago, the first hunter-gatherers crossed into what we now call Ireland, carrying with them dark skin, blue eyes, and a DNA signature that still quietly echoes in modern Irish genes. These early settlers left little behind but bones and tools, yet their genetic fingerprints remain embedded in the Irish genome. Then came the Neolithic period, roughly 6,000 years ago, when farming was introduced by newcomers from the Near East. These Neolithic farmers brought a shift in both lifestyle and DNA, changing skin tone, height, and metabolism over generations. These people built some of the oldest surviving man-made structures in the world, like Newgrange, which is, well, even older than the pyramids. The DNA of the tomb builders reveals surprising continuity. Despite later upheavals, elements of these ancient genomes remain surprisingly quite stable in the Irish population. That's where the mystery begins. Unlike many parts of Europe where ancient DNA was almost completely overwritten by later invasions, Ireland preserved these ancient markers. Maybe it was the island's isolation, or perhaps, you know, it's something deeper. In Ireland, the past isn't just remembered, it's encoded in blood. As the Neolithic Age gave way to the Bronze Age, Ireland experienced one of the most profound genetic shifts in its entire history. Around 4,000 years ago, new groups of people arrived, warriors, herders and traders, likely from the Pontic Caspian steppe region. These migrants brought with them not only metalworking and horses, but a new genetic signature that began to blend with the island's older population. This wave introduced the R1B haplogroup, particularly the R1BM222 variant, which remains one of the most dominant Y-DNA lineages in Irish men today. These newcomers didn't erase the old population, they merged with them, creating something unique. Their genes carried Indo-European language roots, which laid the foundation for the Gaelic languages that would later define Irish identity. Physical traits also shifted. Lighter skin tones became more common, height increased, and certain disease-resistant traits emerged. But here's what makes Ireland mysterious. While many parts of Europe saw ancient DNA disappear under waves of conquest and mixing, Ireland's Bronze Age DNA stuck. Even today, geneticists are struck by how pure the Irish genome remains compared to its neighbours. It's not about being isolated. It's about how the Irish genome absorbed waves of change while keeping a deep ancestral signal intact. As the Bronze Age transitioned into the Iron Age, around 600 BCE, the Celtic influence began to take shape in Ireland. But here's the twist. Unlike in Britain or mainland Europe, the so-called Celtic invasion in Ireland wasn't as dramatic or clear-cut. Genetic studies reveal there's little sign of a major replacement event. Instead, what unfolded was a cultural and linguistic transformation layered on top of an already established genetic foundation. In other words, the Irish became Celtic by culture more than conquest. And this is where, you know, myth and DNA begin to dance. Irish legends like the Tuatha de Danann and the Milesians speak of mystical tribes arriving in waves, battling for control of the land. These stories might sound like pure fantasy, but many geneticists believe they actually echo real ancient memories of population movements and integrations. DNA evidence supports the idea that new elites came, blended and brought with them ideas, not armies. The mystery deepens when we realize just how much of Irish identity was shaped without dramatic genetic overhaul. While the rest of Europe was reshaped by Romans, empires and war, Ireland's remote location helped preserve its deep structure. Its myths became memory and its genes became storytellers of a quiet, complex evolution. From the 9th century onward, new waves of invaders set their sights on Ireland. 
First came the Vikings, sailing from Scandinavia and establishing coastal settlements like Dublin, Limerick and Waterford. They intermarried, raided and traded, but surprisingly their genetic imprint on Ireland is relatively small. Even in regions where Norse influence was strong culturally, the DNA tells a quieter story. The Vikings added to the mix but didn't rewrite the Irish genome. Next were the Normans, arriving in the 12th century. These French-speaking descendants of Viking settlers brought with them feudal systems, stone castles and a new aristocracy. Again, while their impact on Irish society was huge, their genetic legacy remains faint. They were few in number, and over time they assimilated, more Irish than the Irish themselves, as the saying goes. The most aggressive wave came with the Tudor conquests in the 16th century, followed by plantations and English settlers. While this period left deep political and cultural scars, the genetic input, you know, remained limited to specific pockets, mainly in Ulster and parts of Leinster. Despite centuries of conflict, colonization and displacement, Irish DNA honestly remained remarkably resilient. Instead of being overwritten, it absorbed these waves like ripples on an ancient stone, leaving the core unchanged. Today, when scientists study Irish DNA, they often use words like unusual, preserved or even enigmatic. Why? Because Ireland, despite being at the edge of Europe and invaded many times, has maintained one of the most genetically distinct populations on the continent. One of these standout features is the dominance of the R1BM222Y DNA haplogroup, particularly among men in the northwest. This marker is so concentrated in regions like Donegal that it's often associated with the legendary High King, Nile of the Nine Hostages. Whether or not that link is literal, it really points to how powerful families and clans could leave strong genetic footprints. But you know, Irish uniqueness goes even deeper. Studies of mitochondrial DNA passed down from mothers, also reveal patterns not commonly found elsewhere in Europe. Certain rare markers, interestingly, hint at lineages that may stretch all the way back to the first settlers after the Ice Age. Then there's the curious absence of certain European genetic signatures. The Irish genome, for example, lacks major inputs from the Romans who, you know, never truly conquered the island. This makes Irish DNA a kind of time capsule, really. And it's not just about what's present, it's what's missing. Ireland shows fewer genetic shifts than neighbouring Britain, despite, well, similar external pressures. That stability has turned Ireland into a key reference point for geneticists worldwide. When they want to understand what ancient Europe looked like before it was reshaped by empire, war and migration, they look to Ireland. That's the heart of the mystery, how a small island kept so much of its deep past alive in its very blood. The story of Irish DNA doesn't end in Ireland. It spreads across continents, carried by millions who left during centuries of migration. From the Great Famine to modern emigration, Irish people have made homes in the United States, Canada, Australia and beyond. And wherever they've gone, they've brought that unique genetic signature with them. Today, around 80 million people worldwide claim Irish ancestry. But the surprising part is how often their DNA confirms it. In regions like Appalachia, parts of Australia and Newfoundland, scientists still detect clusters of Irish genetic markers, even after generations of mixing. Traits like red hair, pale skin and certain immune-related genes persist, serving as subtle reminders of a deep Irish legacy. For many descendants, discovering Irish roots through DNA testing feels like uncovering a hidden map, one that links them to clans, counties and stories they never knew. Irish DNA isn't just preserved in Ireland, it's whispered across oceans waiting to be recognised. If you enjoyed this deep dive, please like the video and subscribe. It truly helps the channel grow. Irish DNA isn't just old. It's resilient, mysterious and, well, full of echoes from the ancient world. From hidden Neolithic markers to Bronze Age warriors and myth-wrapped legends, Ireland's genome tells a story that science is only beginning to understand. It's not about purity, it's about continuity. Whether you're in Dublin or Boston, Sydney or Buenos Aires, Irish DNA carries a legacy that honestly reaches across time and space. Share your own ancestry story in the comments, because your DNA might hold part of this beautiful...